In this video, we're going to return to a problem that we've seen before, having a particular linear system ax equal to b and writing out its solutions. However, we're going to make a, a small notational shift in this particular video that is going to pave the way for some very nice geometric interpretations in the next video. So let's take this particular system that I have, and this is an example of a system ax equal to b. Now, the example that I gave is already in reduced row echelon form, but if it wasn't, it would be sufficient to just take what we had and do elementary row operations and put it into row echelon form or reduced row echelon form, whichever you prefer. Now, the question is, how do I find the solutions? And our methodology was, I look at the free columns, the columns without leading ones. So since I have a leading one there and a leading one there, that means that I am looking into these two columns and our approach previously was to say that I'm going to set x3, this is corresponding to the third column here, to be an arbitrary parameter s. I'm going to set x4 to be an arbitrary parameter t, and then I can figure out what x1 and x2 is in terms of s and t. So for instance, for x2, this is going to be 1, and then I note that I have this 1 here, and I'll sort of move that to the other side. And so this is going to give me 1 minus x4, but x4 was t, so 1 minus t. And my x1, I'm going to take the 2 that I have here, and I'm going to move that to the other side as well. I have a 0, but then it is minus 2 times x3, or minus 2s. Okay, so that was all review from before. But here's what my slight change is. I'm now going to take all of this information that I have here, and I'm going to collect it into a vector equation, because on the one side I have a vector x. In truth, I have my vector kind of scramble, like it's not x1, x2, x3, x4, but, but that's what I can imagine. Maybe I'll break it up as x1, x2, x3, and x4. And then what I notice is that in here I, I have these parameters located in some places, and then in other cases I have constants that, that don't have a parameter in front of them. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, write a, a vector column that consists of all of the constants. And in truth, in front of the 1, there really is a 0. In front of the 2, there's going to be a 1. In front of the x3, there's going to be a 0. And in front of the x4, there's going to be equal to a 0. So I'm not done, but, but this represents all of the constants that don't come with parameters. And then I'm going to multiply it by this parameter s, and let's see what has a parameter s in it. Well, x1 has minus two s's, so I'm going to put a minus two in for x1. x2 has no s's, so I put a zero. x3 has just one s, and x4 has zero. And then finally, I'm going to put in a t, and then x1 has no t's, x2 has minus one t, x3 has no t's, and x4 has 1t. So this I'm going to refer to as my vector form of a solution, where I'm taking the vector x, and I am writing it as this linear combination of different vectors, a constant vector, and then a bunch of vectors that have the parameter multiplied out the front as a constant. And then if I want to think about what solutions are to this, well, you always start at the constant. The x is always equal to this constant vector that we have. But then from there, you can go some amount s in this second vector that we have and some amount t in the third vector. So that's how I sort of think about it is, is you're fixed in at that constant vector, but you can leave that constant vector some amount s in the one direction and t in the other direction. And then to generalize this a little bit, if I just look at my RREF form of my system, I count the number of free columns I have. In this case, only had two. but in general, I might have n free columns. I will get n parameters, and then I will get n infinite families of solutions. So in this particular case, where I just have these two different vectors that come with parameters, it can be anything, is I'm going to say that I have two different infinite families of solutions.